Coming up, Time Warner grabs a stake in the video service Hulu. Loaning useful information each weekday. The WBBM Noon Business Hour continues. Our story stock today, Time Warner shares are higher. company has agreed to buy a 10% stake in Hulu, a move that comes as content provider prepares to launch a new live streaming video service. We're joined by Tim Hanlon, Managing Director of FTI Consulting in Chicago. Uh, Tim, uh, thanks for joining us on the Noon Business Hour today. And what does this uh, stake in Hulu do for Time Warner and the other big uh, media companies that have a stake in it. Hi, Chris. Well, it's um, uh, Time Warner is the the latest investor. As uh, your listeners probably know, there are um, uh, other investors in uh, the Hulu uh, video service over the years, including NBC Universal uh, and um, uh, other other firms. Uh, they're just the latest to, Disney to enter and HBO. Into, yeah, indeed, into the fray and. In essence, what uh, it does for Hulu, it gives it uh, Hulu uh, it, both in its current form and in its uh, envisioned um, uh, online video live streaming uh, service uh, early next year, a huge um, uh, boost with uh, the commitment of various uh, Time Warner-owned uh, cable networks, uh, short of HBO, but uh, everything from uh, uh, TBS to TNT uh, and all the things that sort of come along with that. So, in essence, it's a huge boost. That's really the only major uh, network uh, programmer that is now absent from the Hulu lineup uh, is CBS. How, how are these large media companies going to be looking in five years? Uh, the changes that they're making today, what are they morphing into? Well, I, I think this investment is really indicative of uh, the belief that uh, the way television is distributed is now no longer truly only going to be through cable operators and satellite operators. There is a, really a, a, a large momentum around, let's call them for today, alternate distribution mechanisms, right? whether they be through online streaming uh, or over-the-air antenna, which arguably isn't new, but uh, everything old is new again. Um, and I think every programmer truly is going through the exercise now of how do we multiply uh, simultaneously deliver our signals, our content, uh, to the various places, plural, uh, that uh, we can distribute and consumers might want to, uh, to access us at. While we uh, take a look at the future of television distribution, Time Warner is also making a splash by going back to the fast. The back to the past, they are uh, relaunching uh, MV. It used to be VH1 Classic. Now it's MTV Classic. And for all of us whose uh, formative years were in the early to mid 1990s, this is our channel because they're showing Remote Control, Beavis and Butthead, Daria, all the shows that MTV showed back in the 90s, and. And it's kind of interesting where you bring this entire programming catalog to the table. It's now available either via a cable channel or via streaming services. Eventually, you kind of run out of pass, don't you? I think I think the the uh, the owners of MTV and VH1 Viacom. I mean, I think they recognize, and I think frankly, the arrival of various OTT over the top video channels is, is evidence of this. Is that there is absolutely tremendous value in the library of television content, right? We've seen this with uh, various uh, digital channels like Antenna TV and, uh, um, and uh, MeTV uh, here in Chicago. But, we, you know, there's no doubt that there's a whole generation of MTV viewers. I was one of them back in 1981, 82, watching the originals, you know, the video clips that um, uh, grew up on, on some of those shows like The Real World and Yo! MTV Raps, et cetera. And in essence, I think this is just Viacom recognizing that there is a, a valuable library that can be repackaged and reintroduced to people who saw it the first time, as well as a whole new generation of viewers who never saw it in the first place. Good to talk with you, Tim. Thanks for joining us. Tim Hanlon, Managing Director, FTI Consulting here in Chicago.